Remember again, any sugar, if it's C5 or C6 or above, in water, it's going to form ring form. Okay, it's going to close itself and form a ring. You can have furanose or pyranose. Okay, you have C5, not C5, sorry, five member ring or six member ring. Now, when the sugar closes and forms a ring, the, the carbonyl oxygen will go from a carbonyl to a hydroxyl group. Okay, and as you form the hydroxyl group, you can always have two enomers. Okay, so this carbon will have one enomer that has OH pointing up, and then the other one is going to point down. Now, remember that if it points down, this is alpha. If it points up, it's beta. So yesterday, we went through common disaccharides with alpha connection, and what you can see is that in all three examples here, what you have is the alpha enomer of the sugar that's on the left. So the bonding, as you can see here, it's alpha 1 to 4, okay? And this alpha 1 to 4 is referring to the alpha enomer of the left side sugar, the, what we'll see later today, the non-reducing end. Right, so you have half reducing N, and then this N will be a non-reducing N, right? Because this particular monomer of sugar no longer has that aldehyde, so it's non-reducing, whereas the monomer on the right, it still has the aldehyde because Right, because if you know I break this guy apart, it's gonna give me aldehyde. Okay, so that's why it's a reducing. And then we got to beta as well. There are many disaccharides common in nature that are beta linkage. For example, cellobios is a component. This is a component of cellulose. We'll see cellulose today as one of the most abundant polymer in nature. And then you have lactose. Lactose is the sugar that you have in milk. You have gentibios. Okay, actually, I don't know what gentibios is used for. But what you can see is that in all cases, you have the beta enomer, right? So this is pointing up. This is also pointing up. Now, don't get confused by this. This does not mean that there are two carbons here. Right? This is just the textbook's way of showing that the bond points up. So what you'll see in some textbook, it's actually a curved, okay? A curved O, a curve like that. Right? So it's not like it's an extra carbon or anything like that, okay? It's just remember that here, your enomer, enomer carbon here going to the OH is just one bond, okay? It's not like many bonds. So this is a list of common disaccharides that we see a lot. For example, sucrose, this is your tabletop sugar. Lactose, we talked about that. Trehalose, uh, it's found in some yeast or fungi, okay? It's also used as a energy storage for some organisms. Maltose, maltose is the building block for making amylose, and this is what happens when you go and uh, degrade when you heat up sucrose and then you degrade it into uh, you know something that you can eat right like uh, and then you have cellobios, gentibios. So uh, how to represent disaccharides in simple writing? We'll always start with the non-reducing N on the left. So when we're writing it we're gonna start with the non-reducing N on the left and then you will have prefixes either alpha or beta, whatever, D or L or whatever, okay? Those are going to be used to designate the enomeric and the enteomeric forms of your sugar monomer. And then sometimes we'll also have little P and F to signify for pyranose or furanose, 
to tell you what's their ring configuration. And then typically we'll also indicate the bond location okay, between which two carbon. For example, here we have alpha D. Okay, so here it tells you that it's an alpha enomer and D telling you that it's a D sugar and this is glucose in its pyranose form, okay? And the linkage is going to be 1 for the glucose, this is C1, and then to 2 of the second sugar, which is a beta D fructose in the furanose form. So this is C1, this is C2. So in another example here, we have glucose alpha 1,4 glucose, and you will be asked to be able to draw the structure on an exam, for example. So given, the, given glucose alpha 1,4 glucose, you should first know that alpha, meaning you know, if you have a glucose molecule, it's going to point down. Okay, it's going to point down. And then it's 1,4. This is 1. And then Here's my second glucose ring. I have one, two, three, four. So it's going to bond it to number four carbon. Okay, now, for my purpose, uh, I will not ask you to memorize the stereochemistry of every OHs. Like, for example, if you have to draw glucose, you don't have to remember that, for example, C2 points down, C3 points up, C4 points down. I will give you pictures for that so you don't have to get very uh, anxious about this on the exam. But again, okay, again, I always say this. If you want to be a future biochemist, it would be a good idea to know the chemical structures of the common sugars. Okay, it would be a good idea. But in this case, you know, it's not absolutely essential for you to, to memorize that. Okay? But you definitely have to know uh, the enomers. Alpha is down, beta is up. Okay, that you have to know. In this case, what you should also know is that for the glucose, okay, for glucose, the number four carbon, the hydroxyl group on the four carbon here, it, it points down. Okay, so that, that's why alpha 1,4, you have a structure that looks like that. Okay, when we talk about beta 1,4, it, it's going to be different. Now, the question is then, how are saccharide bonds formed? How do you form these bonds? What you see is that it's a condensation reaction. It eliminates water between two molecules. Right? So you take two hydroxyl groups. At the end, you end up linking them with an oxygen in the middle. That means that you kick out a water molecule. Now, if you look at this chemical reaction, and what you'll see is that the standard change in free gives, uh, gives free energy is going to be about 10 kilojoules per mole. Okay? If you turn that into KEQ, or the equilibrium constant, what you'll see is that the equilibrium constant is 0 0.01. Okay, so it's a, it's a not favorable reaction. Right? So this is not something that is favorable. Okay? So in reality, the direction that is preferred is in the degradation pathway, the degradation route. Now, then the question is, wait a minute. You know, we're building trees and stuff like that. That happens naturally. How does that happen? So that how does that, or how do cells do it? That's the question. So it turns out we're going to get back to this again when we get to a Biochemistry 2 next semester. But real quickly, what you have to do is you have to first activate your glucose okay, or, or your sugar in general. All right? So let's say you start with galactose. This is just a sugar. What you turn out doing is that you first activate it using ATP so that here instead of just an OH here, what you have is an O phosphate. Now remember the hydrolysis of ATP gives you about minus 30 kilojoules per mole of energy. Now you spend that amount of energy and then you can phosphorylate your sugar. Okay, so now your sugar has energy. Then the sugar can do some other stuff. Turns out you're going to do another round of uh, activation using UTP. UTP is similar in a way to ATP, but instead of adding phosphate on the sugar, 
what you end up doing is you add essentially UTP split up to UMP plus two phosphate molecules together. And then this UMP is going to be linked to the uh, phosphate group on the sugar. Now, this thing is going to be called UDP galactose. So this is actually uh, something that happens very commonly and very frequently to saccharide formation. Okay, so inside of, for example, your cells, when you're producing glycogen, which is the short-term energy storage inside of your blood okay, or, or your cell, that's what we do. Okay? You have to turn your glucose or whatever sugar into an UDP sugar. Okay? So this UDP here, essentially it has a lot of energy. And then all you have to do is give it another sugar. Okay? And then it's going to react and then the release of UDP provides the thermodynamic driving force that you need for this reaction. So essentially, the saccharide bonds are formed through the aid of ATP and then UTP. So you're using high energy triphosphate to override the thermodynamic unfavorability of, unfavorability, is that even a word? Okay, the thermodynamic, to, to provide the thermodynamic driving force to, uh, to do this process, okay?